Hello, good evening. Welcome to the channel. You might remember the last video. Short and simple and quite frivolous. Today we're having another look at capacitors, but this time we're going to look a little bit more seriously at that pile of capacitors that uh, I showed in the last video. If you haven't seen it, watch it at the end. It will be on a card up here somewhere. What have we got on the bench? Well, we have the pile of capacitors. We have a cheap and cheerful multimeter that can measure quite low amps, DC amps, which is what we want to look at. I have the wires from a power supply. Now, you can use a battery. If you've only got 9-volt batteries, there's nothing to stop you wiring up a 9-volt a battery. And I thought it would be good to show how capacitors should block DC and some do it better than others. So let's take a look at what's on the bench. Now all of these, apart from that which is not a capacitor, came out of various radios and why did I change them? Because experience. Experience says certain types just don't work very well after 40, 50, 60 years. Now I haven't got any wax capacitors here because I haven't done any valve sets for a while and I would change those simply because they will have dried out. So what have I got connected? Well these are the positive and the negative of my power supply and the negative is connected to the negative of the multimeter. I have the two positives here. Now if I connect this to this it will show a dead short and this meter will go pop which is not what I want to do because I quite like this little multimeter. So what we need to do is we need to put some form of DC blocking in. Now a capacitor should block DC. AC would get through so if we put an audio signal through the capacitor this would measure audio current if we switched it to AC. But we're trying to see if the capacitor leaks and when I mean leaks, I mean leaks DC through the capacitor, which could affect the next stage of whatever it is in the radio. Amplifier, telephone, anything with capacitors that are designed to block DC should block DC. So let's take, uh, for example, a good old favourite, the Dally. Now, these things, I change purely from experience. There's there's just no way I would use a DALI capacitor or leave one in a piece of equipment these days because when they were working they were great but nowadays they've all dried out they're all pretty rubbish. So what are we going to do? Well we're going to connect the positive of the power supply to the positive terminal of the capacitor. Then we're going to take the positive of the multimeter and connect it to the negative terminal now keep your eye on the multimeter and you'll see that it will bang over very hard and it should drop back, but it doesn't. That's because it's leaking DC. Now to give a comparison, let's take this big yellow new capacitor and do the same thing. Let's connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and it goes over and when it's fully charged which can take a while it starts to drop back and that's showing that there's no DC leakage or very little DC leakage going through this capacitor now the lower that needle goes the better this capacitor is I'm expecting this to be good because this is a new capacitor that has never been used. It doesn't mean to say all new capacitors, whether they be new Dallys, new Philips, new Elka molds, are any good because they can dry out in storage. Now this one has gone right down and it's still going down very slowly. It takes a while, but it's just going to show you that this is doing what it's meant to do 
and blocking DC to the best of its ability. Now, it's not infallible. There will always be a slight bit of leakage. Now, we're on the 60 microamp scale, which is the middle one. We're reading less than 2 microamps at the moment, which is pretty good for a capacitor. And I would say that that was acceptable. Now, what we can do is, because we've charged it up, we can actually discharge it. And you heard that little crack there, I hope. So let's pick another one. Um, let's try this Elka mold. Positive, negative. And does it start dropping back? No. Not at all. That one is what I would call not acceptable. So what happens when you connect a capacitor the wrong way round? Well, let's have a look. It does that. Now, this is a 25-volt capacitor. Puff of smoke. More smoke. Now, that's obviously showing it's venting out. Here we go. Now we get a regular steam of sm stream of smoke. More smoke. And that's it pretty much finished. The current has now dropped to pretty much zero. It's not going to do anything else because it's vented out the top, which is exactly what it's meant to do. See what happens when you connect a Russian capacitor the wrong way round. And this one has no venting. Now the base of it is swelling quite rapidly, I can see. getting smoke if you like the channel subscribe like bell notifications, you know what to do. Why not have a look at some of the other videos? Take care now.